Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Scott. Hey, yo. He's got his younger brother. It's going to be Jeff. The cream will rise to the top. Oh, yeah. And you're listening to all of the great action figures from our good friends at Hasbro. The fully postable. Have your own WrestleMania with all your favorite figures. Wrestling figure. They sold separately from LJN. Podcast. And we are the Mount Rushmore of professional <laughs> wrestling. Welcome to a special interview with Chris DiPatrillo from Figures Toy Company. Chris, how are you doing? Long time no talk, man. Um, yeah, it's my big return like Warrior running out at the end of WrestleMania 8. Glad to be back. <laughs> well, we're happy to have you back. Before we go into any topics or anything, why don't you go ahead and get your plugs out of the way? All right. So it's been a while, but I will remind you in case you haven't been on the Twitter machine lately, uh, figurestoycompany.com and wrestlingsuperstore.com is where I am based. And it's where you can find your favorite wrestling action figures from Ring of Honor, the Legends of Professional Wrestling and the Rising Stars of Wrestling line. Uh, We just recently released the Flip Gordon figure from the Rising Stars of Wrestling series. Figures from Ring of Honor, such as Delirious, Dalton Castle, uh, previous talents like Moose, ACH, all sorts of accessories, including the new steel cage playset exclusive to Figure Toy Company, are all available right now for your ordering pleasure. You can order them at figurestoycompany.com and wrestlingsuperstore.com, and you can follow along with us for updates on in-stock items, non-wrestling items, and upcoming items on Facebook and Instagram, looking up Figures Toy Company and Wrestling Superstore by name, or seeking us out on Twitter at Figures Toy Co., at W-R-E-S underscore Superstore, or my personal account on Twitter at Zach Malibu. Man, have you uh, practiced that one or two times? It's just natural at this point. It's like Dustin Rhodes, just natural. (laughs) We had all these plans for WrestleMania this past year, and those went by the wayside. You actually had plans for WrestleCon, too. Yeah, there were big plans for WrestleCon. So uh, a lot of people don't know this. I know that you were in the loop because we were going to make a big deal about it. But mm-hmm. the Figures Toy Company crew was going to be at WrestleCon with a very special guest. We were actually going to have the Kiss Demon himself, Dale Torborg, taking pictures and signing the Kiss Demon Legends figures. And uh, unfortunately, that did not come to pass due to the pandemic that we're currently facing right now. And uh, we were also planning on having quite a few new figures out. Uh, but the impact of the virus, uh, you know, factories in China have seen delays and shutdowns across the board. And that goes for FTC. But a lot of the figures that were due to come out around now that were kind of hitting that 18 month time frame, like uh, Francine, Chris Candido, Scott Norton, Shane Strickland, Joey Janela. We were hoping to have most, if not all of them, out in the springtime, and the delays put the kibosh on WrestleMania, put the kibosh on production, and we're just kind of moving along as fast as we can. We're kind of at the mercy of this virus here. Yeah, I've heard the same thing across the toy line industry. I mean, it's just not wrestling figures. It's across the industry where figures are getting delayed out of China over here. So, And Mattel had that where it was like basically nothing on the pegs for a couple of months. Now, usually they have that re- quote unquote reset. Oh, you, yeah. I mean, we it, were talking before we went on air that I, I was seeing Elite 75 so much that Billy Kay is warming the pegs here. You guys are flooded with her out there, huh? Well, like I haven't seen one Peyton Royce, but I could build an army of iconic Billy Case. <laughs> Before we go any further, I want to congratulate you. You retired a bunch of figures just recently. And yes. when we say retired, you sold out. Chris Hero, Dream Team, Hanson yep. from War Machine. You sold out of the ROH ring and both Jim Cornettes. Congratulations on selling out of all those, man. I'm happy for you guys. Thank you. Thank you. And the Adam Cole, the very first Adam Cole figure, the one that did not look like a, a sleeping puppy. Is that how you put it when that first figure came out? Yeah, the eyes, uh, dude. It just kind of it, it looked like a sleeping puppy. But that's a, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the original Adam Cole figure uh, also retired. Um, the, uh, you know, Previously, the Jay Lethal from ROH Series 1. A lot of those older figures or the more popular figures – are selling out pretty fast. I mean, the Cornet figure, not only the first edition, but the second edition that just came out already sold out and has been going for insane 
prices on the secondary market. And this is a figure that is literally only about a month old. You kind of touched on it about the impact of COVID, but can you go a little bit more in depth of how it's impacted you? Like, what are the factories at now? What's timeframes for figures that are going to be coming out sooner? I mean, what is everything looking like right now? I mean, right now there's just everything. I mean, not even everything just coming from overseas, but just everything in general is a big question mark. I mean, we're working under the restrictions as best we can. Uh, the factories are operating, but you know, China got hit really hard, uh, just as like we're getting hit really hard now. So their operations are not at 100. percent They're doing what we what they can. Um, we're doing what we can to try to get them to move along. But it's kind of like you know, we're all trying to just you know move the same wheel. And with the virus, like I said, it, it delayed so much. So you know, a lot of people will see the timeline, uh, or should I say, they'll see the announcement of a figure. You know, I know timeline is a big thing in the collector's world. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, when is this figure coming out? How come we haven't seen this? Oh, these are supposed to hit on such and such a date. And, you know, not just with us, but with everybody. And I've said it before, the average production time uh, for FTC, and I mean, this is across the, I mean, Mattel's average production time, unless they put something through a rush, like I know they really rushed to get the fiend out, but I've seen Steve, action figure attack, tell people, hey, you know, it takes us a year, maybe a year and a half to get a figure out. Now, that's coming from Mattel, who is a giant. You know, they, they're a bigger company than FTC. You know, you, you, you can't deny that. That's obvious. It's right. no point blank in your face. So with us to have a 12 to 18 month time frame, that's normal because it's, you know, smaller production runs and whatnot. But if you remember, we moved the wrestling production over to its own factory towards the end of 2019 so that production was not affected by us doing the DC Comics figures that we do and the Kiss figures, the Three Stooges, all that type of stuff that we have in the works. For our other licensing, we gave uh, a factory to wrestling, you know, its own place. That way we can pump them out, get figures out faster, get more people signed and keep the lines moving along pandemic hits and that puts a kibosh on everything puts a delay on all the figures that were set to come out um joe Janela, shane strickland francine chris candido scott norton those are all the ones that we should see coming out sooner than later but i don't know when sooner is going to be i'm hoping that maybe some will show up by the end of the summer uh it's completely possible because we did just get a delivery that featured a couple of wrestling figures not that long ago which was the jim Cornette variant in the new flip gordon figure that just came out mm-hmm. um but it's just it's just a big question of what if and when. I mean, they're all coming. Uh, you know, I see people. Oh, this figure got canceled. No, nothing got canceled. Oh, when's it going to come out? Like 2024. It's like now is not the time for passive aggressive nonsense. We don't need any of that. I know everyone's kind of going stir crazy and, and wants new stuff and everything. But our timeline is no different than Super Seven, than Mattel, than Boss Fight. We're all facing it. It is across the board. You know, I want these figures to come out just as much and uh, what people also need to realize is you know super seven boss fight mattel you know they tend to kind of have annual announcements they'll do comic-con uh they'll do festivals they'll do online things they'll do youtube videos they'll do these big things i kind of do that grassroots thing and you guys know this but i try to make it a little bit more personable where it's like Hey, you know what? I'm going to show something off on Twitter during AEW tonight. I'm going to put something up on Monday night during Raw. Like, you know, hey, oh, there's a pay per view tonight. Hey, you know what? Let's talk about wrestling figures too. I'm just going to like throw this out there. So just because I make an announcement or just because someone that we sign says, hey, I signed a figure story company contract today, that doesn't mean that figure just started getting made that day. You know, you have to kind of allot for the time of design, you know, to do those uh, costume renderings, to get the sculpt done. And then, you know, we're not going to piecemeal it and do one figure at a time. You know, when we put something into production, a whole series is going into production. So you kind of have to wait for those first four to six figures to get done and then sent in. So if Joey Janela signs in May of 2018, but then Shane Strickland signs in August of 2018, they're going to be in the same production room. We're going to wait for everybody to kind of be done to get them all done. And I'm just using those two names as an example because they just happen to come to mind. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people have to kind of take that into consideration too. Like people get excited when they see a signing, people get excited when they see a sculpt or a rendering, but there's also a more lengthy process to it. Now I could keep quiet and not show anything off until there's a prototype to be seen. But then I kind of feel like I'm doing a disservice to the fig life community because I want the hype to be rolling so that people 
are anticipating that prototype or anticipating a pre-order or that they know when something's coming. It just kind of feels flat if I sit there and then I'm like, oh, hey, you know what? By the way, it's Monday and on Friday, the Ethan Page figure is going to be out. Then you know, you've only got four days worth of hype to build on. Whereas for some people, yeah, you hate waiting, but then you also have other people that are like, I can't wait to get this figure. I really want it. And then, you know, it's like Christmas morning. You wait all year for Christmas morning to crack, crack open your gifts. Uh, we all want Christmas to be the very next day. We all want that gift, me more so than anybody. But we just kind of got to do what we got to do right now. Um, I know with the new factory, under normal circumstances, things will be out a lot faster. But right now, we're all kind of under this COVID cloud waiting for it to clear. That's one of the things is a lot of people see is you put out the rendering, you show off, you kind of start from the beginning of when figures get announced or renderings are shown and stuff like that. I don't know. I guess it seems like a lot of people are focusing on that beginning time frame, And then when the figure came out and they're like, oh, that took forever, you know, but like you said, you kind of do that grassroots thing where you kind of like to show it off at the beginning and say, hey, got this person signed and all that stuff. So it seems like a lot of people are just kind of focusing on that that length of time and like you said it's like the 18 months if i'm not mistaken yeah it's it's 12 to 18 months for us to get something out and now remember you know take a company like mattel so you know they might have like their next four or five elite series sets all announced ready to go all in production they, you know they might have 20 to 30 wrestling figures in production at any given time so it's like you know even if there's a distribution problem even if your walmart shelves are bare there is still stuff trickling in to other places you know elite 75 might be warming the shelves but 76 might be popping up on amazon or 77 might be showing up at walmart so it's kind of like you know there is a flow going even though the newest figures and the newer figures are still taking some time with ftc we've always got figures moving in different levels of production but when we put them into like a bulk assortment like okay we've got six guys signed all six guys going to production right now it's like if they all come out together then the next wave that comes out will be the guys that had just gotten signed or the guys that are already kind of in mid-production. So it's like there's a little bit more space between a wave of Legends or a wave of Rising Stars or a wave of ROH versus something like Mattel, which is kind of keeping things running as quickly as they can because they have shelf space to fill up. Right. FTC is an exclusive, you know, an ex not an exclusive company, but these are exclusive to FTC. You know, we've got some great partners that do wholesale, you know, both uh, domestic and international, mm -hmm. but they're not showing up on the shelves in Walmart and Target. Like we don't have an obligation to keep retail shelves filled. We have an obligation to keep our own warehouse filled. And that's why I say, you know, we want to do it as much as anybody, but we've got to work within the proper timely timeline we have to be cost effective. You know, we have to make sure that all of our T's are crossed and our I's are dotted. And then when they come in, you know, we've talked about that before in the past, and you guys have said it, support the lines, more figures will get made. Because these figures do perform well and sell so well, and I'm able to say that I made the first time figure of someone and it's now retired, or that I've made a Jim Cornette that is selling for four digits on eBay, uh, which is... <laughs> crazy to me um but hey more power to the person that buys those figures you know i i love the enthusiasm um you know i want to be able to get more people i want to be able to get more people done under the roh license because we have so many first time figures and can't miss figures coming out there between uh you know pco marty like you know all those guys that just will have like those great gimmicky looks um, you know, Ethan Page's figures coming out, Brian Pillman Jr., you know, a lot of people were talking about him showing up on AEW Dark. Um, Janela, you know, people are so hyped about these AEW figures. And I'm not gonna say, oh, you know, what AEW figures? Obviously, you know, I always acknowledge stuff. I think some of those figures look great. Some of them, eh, you know, I could kind of take it or leave it. But mm -hmm. that is a line that I plan on collecting because my five year old who loves wrestling, he loves AEW. And this is something that I can start from the ground floor with him and collect all the way through. You know, he collects his Mattel. He obviously gets all his FTC figures from dad. But, you know, I can't go back and buy him every basic and elite. That's just not going to happen. You know, I'll have to mortgage this house and the next five houses that I buy just to be able to get him that collection. So <laughs> at least with W, you know, we can start from day one and I can get him his Cody Rhodes and his Kenny Omega and his Brandy Rhodes and all those and we can carry it all the way through. Uh, but our Joey Janela, you know, FTC is going to be the first people to provide Joey Janela to the Fig Life community. And mm -hmm. I think that that's a big thing. Um, you know, Ring of Honor, we just put out the new Ring of Honor replica belts. 
And that's been a huge thing for the, co- the collectors in the belt community. Mm-hmm. So now I want those figures in stock to kind of pile onto that. So, you know, I'm trying to get them out and we are trying to get them out. And just when things were looking up and we were going to have stuff ready for WrestleMania season and we had the new factory, Mother Nature, the world, whatever you want to call it, dealt us, uh, dealt us a blow that has led to the delay. Now, have you been able to test the new factory to see if it would be sooner that figures would get out? Like you were mentioning 12 to 18. Was that 12 to 18 under the old factory or was would have that have been the, with also the new factory? Because you mentioned that now this factory is working specifically on wrestling itself. So, I mean, it's just in general. That, that's just the general timeline that we earmark. Um, but this factory is solely doing wrestling for FTC. Everything done for DC Comics, um, like I said, our other licensing is all happening at the, uh, not regular factory, but the uh, the original factory, we'll say. Mm-hmm. And then this factory that we've added on here, wrestling is in its own space. So it's like one side is the Figures Toy Company retro figures. And when I say retro, I don't mean like WWE retro. These are like <laughs> the old 70s and 80s style figures featuring uh-huh. many of your favorite heroes uh-huh. uh and then all of the ftc figures that are wrestling related are all in their own little space so anything wrestling is there so if they can churn them out even faster once things are back at 100 percent, even better um but i would say that at least a year is still going to be the earmark and then you know maybe slightly more but you know even even without the transition um even you know moving them to the factory in the later portion of last year we were still pretty much a go ahead for like the Scott Norton and the Shane Strickland. Like I said, we would have had them in stock this spring, but it didn't happen because of all the other factors. And that would have hit us right on the 18 month timeline because a lot of those people went to production in mid to late 2018. Now, a lot of people are most excited for this Alex Wright figure. And to say the least, that is that has been one of the hottest names that you guys have brought to the table I, mm-hmm. I, in a, quite a while. And kudos to you guys for even getting Alex Wright. Can you kind of walk us through that? Like, how did you get in touch with Alex Wright? Uh, so I was just doing my research as far as who I wanted to add to the line, um, if this is your first time listening or if it's been a while. So not only do I oversee these lines, but I am the person who goes and approaches these people and kind of creates the lineups. Uh, I basically have a list in mind. I get the okay. I get a budget and, you know, here's how many you can go after. And I will go after who makes the most sense at the time. So, you know, our legends line features a lot of guys from ECW. We've got a couple of guys from WCW. We've done Conan, we've done Hoobie, we've done the Kiss Demon. So I kind of wanted to spread the love across and get some talent in there that didn't have the ECW relationship. Um, not that I have anything against ECW. I love ECW, but we've done so many of them. I felt it was time for a little bit more variety. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, very fortunate to get Scott Norton. Scott's an awesome, awesome guy. He was a huge get. He's one that I think that people are really psyched about. But with Alex Wright, you know, he only had the San Francisco Toy Makers figure. Mm-hmm. He was a, you know, pretty integral part of the WCW mid card, uh, TV title, cruiserweight scene, like all that type of stuff. I was a fan when I was a kid. Uh, still a fan watching old matches and just kind of did my research and he's located overseas. Uh, he's a trainer. He, I was able to contact him through his uh, email, through his gym, uh, got in touch with him, just kind of went back and forth a little bit. He agreed to it. And it was just simple as that, like very cut and dry, very nice. Uh, you know, he understands what we're doing. He was all for it. And that is one of the better sculpts we have ever done on any of the wrestling figures. That was just a phenomenal, phenomenal job once we got that full mock-up with the paint decal added. You guys did a, actually on his hair as well because he always had that kind of flowing hair that would kind of parted over to the yep. to the right. Man, it, it was on point, man. I love that face sculpt. You guys did very, very well on that one. That one will be striking a pose on my desk as soon as it's available. Mark my words. <laughs> Speaking of the Legends line, who else do you have lined up for the Legends line? So we've got Scott Norton, Chris Candido, Francine, uh, all of those should be out, like I said, in the uh, next few releases that we are able to get in. Those ones are pretty much ready to go uh, or we're as close to ready to go as possible. And then we've got Alex Wright coming. Let's see. I, there's just so many. It's almost like kind of overwhelming at this point. There is a legend that I have not announced yet that will be available. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
in the future. Uh, I cannot announce that person's name yet. Um, it is a man. Uh, I know some people like the their women figures and have recommended a lot of women figures, but it is another male performer um, with ties to several different federations. Uh, that's pretty much as much as I can give away for that. And then, you know, uh, the Legends line, the Rising Stars line, they've got a lot of talent coming out. But we also limited some of the signings that we were doing there just to put a lot of focus back on the Ring of Honor figures, uh, you know, with that licensing and going for the second wave of those because we're trying to do a lot of that roster. And you know, we wanted to make sure that we were able to get a lot of the talent from Ring of Honor done uh, along with signing people independently. And that line is just... I mean, full, full of just first time great looking figures. Uh, like I already mentioned PCO, but then you've got Kenny King, which we announced, uh, the mm -hmm. updated Jay Lethal and the Briscoes. You know, you mentioned retired figures earlier. So if you never jumped on that first wave of Ring of Honor, here's the new Jay Lethal. Here's a new Briscoe, uh, Jay Briscoe, Mark Briscoe with the updated looks that you can capitalize on. Just a, a whole lot coming. I mean, we'll have to put together a list of just everybody who's, you know, anticipated at this point. Now, we also said Chris Hero was a retired figure. We do have to preface that the Duke Blue Devil Chris Hero look is still available over Figures Toyco. I did want to actually yes. preface that because I did say Dream Team, but I want you guys to know that there is a Duke Blue Devil variant as well. Yes, the, uh, the, uh, the original Chris Hero releases, you know, we released the two variants, the Dream Team one, excuse me, and these were released prior to that Cassius Ono that you know, 50% of the Fig Life community was unable to find on target, target shelves. Yeah. So if you missed out on Cassius Ono, if you love Chris Hero, if you love Cassius Ono, if you haven't seen this figure, if you haven't gotten this figure, I would recommend getting the Duke Blue version sooner than later because the Dream Team one and the Duke Blue one were made in exact numbers. So the fact that the Dream Team one is completely sold out means that the Duke Blue one is trickling down to the wire. So if you have not acquired a Chris Hero figure yet, I would urge you to do so as soon as possible. Uh, same goes for Roe from the Ring of Honor line. You know, Hanson is retired, but most of our customers were buying them in tandem because, hey, that's War Machine. That's the Viking Raiders, the War Raiders. So because Hanson's retired, Roe is most likely going to be the next one you see popping up on that retired list. And by retired, it means gone, done for good, not going to be uh, redone again. With Jim Cornette, we do have ongoing communication and contact with him. So with Jim Cornette, the potential for more variants is there. I have spoken to Jim about doing different colored suits. Uh, there were also options for different kinds of variants uh, to be discussed among the toy lines. If you guys remember, we did the old school Legends figures that had bloody variants. I have pitched the idea a couple of months ago to do bloody variants of some of the figures that were coming out. It was something that we were looking at before the shutdown. Uh, that is something that I'm trying to revisit once we start getting the factory, op factory operations up and running. So you could see bloody variants in the Rising Stars and Legends lines coming soon, too. So a lot of stuff to catch up on while you can and a lot more stuff to look forward to when it comes. And the ROH ring was also retired as well. But you guys yes. still have the ROH license. Is there a chance that the ROH ring could also make a reappearance later on? It definitely could make an appearance later on. Right now, we are going to focus on doing the second wave of figures and then look at revisiting doing the ring. If you remember, the ring was originally packaged with an unbreakable Michael Elgin figure. And, you know, Michael Elgin was all over the box and added and everything like that. So it's not just a matter of not doing the ring, but it's a matter of looking at it and seeing, OK, are we going to create another playset with a figure as part of the second wave? Are we going to do it on its own? Uh, you know, we couldn't go back and do that ring because we're not going to go back and do that Michael Elegant figure. You know, he's no longer affiliated with Ring of Honor. And you know how that goes. You know, anyone who's under Ring of Honor contract is available to us after that. Kiss him goodbye. Once they're gone, they're gone. So the fact that that ring sold out uh, under those circumstances, we're unable to do it right now. But we do hope to do another Ring of Honor ring down the line, either with one of the newer figures or just on its own. Just segueing from rings over to cages that go on your rings. You guys just put out a new steel cage and how is that doing over at wrestling superstore? One of our biggest sellers right now and everybody, I have seen nothing but universal love for it. Uh, there's a lot of guys on Twitter that love it. I know that, uh, our buddy Chad just acquired one. I've seen uh, big Woody over there on Twitter posting pictures of his figures with it. Uh, the steel cage does not fit Mattel rings, 
It does not fit Wicked Cool Toys rings. It is not made for those rings. It is made for the FTC scale rings, which are very similar to the Jax rings. So if you do have an older Jax real scale ring, it should fit that no problem. It absolutely fits our rings. It was made for our product. So it is available separately or is available in a bundle with an FTC ring. If you don't have an FTC ring, uh, hit up our buddy Ring Skirts. He prides himself on using our FTC ring in all of his fig photos that everybody loves. Uh, he will definitely, definitely speak to the positivity of that ring. It is one of the best toy rings that I have personally ever played with. It is also completely customizable. So you can get different ring skirts. Uh, you can get corner pads if you want to have a Japan-looking ring. You can get all sorts of colored ropes. You can get stairs, barbed wire, whatever you want for your ring along with this cage. Uh, definitely check them out over at WrestlingSuperstore.com. That's where all the ring accessories and the rings and the cage are at. But the cage was a uh, a huge coup for us. It was a big investment. Uh, we wanted to make sure that it you know really you know hit a chord with the fans. And I would say that the cage is outselling even some of the figures at this point. Actually, I do have a quick question regarding the Japanese ring. With the resurgence sure. of New Japan Pro Wrestling over here in America, how's the Japanese ring selling for Wrestling Superstore? The corner pad accessories to customize it to be a Japanese ring, those yes. have done well ever since we got them. Um, I've seen plenty of fig photos and stuff like that utilizing them. Uh, there, are, you know, I've also thrown out there of doing like different colored corner pads and maybe some different colored ring skirts and stuff like that to give a little bit more flair to uh, people's displays and collections. Uh -huh. But yeah, that has been that was that proved to be another popular choice too. A lot of people love those corner pad accessories because they're really not done anywhere else. Like it's kind of like. It's almost an obvious choice, but an out there choice at the same time. You know, it just felt like the right thing to do, but I don't see a lot of people kind of capitalizing on that. And, you know, if there's ever a New Japan ring for the New Japan figures that are coming out, I'm sure they'll go that route because it would be done under the licensing. But for now, if you're going to be collecting those Super 7 figures and want something that looks as authentic to uh, the New Japan format as you can get, that's going to be the way to go. Yeah, I'm all for it right now because I, I'm in love with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Just like I was about WCW, you know, your favorite era earlier during the pandemic, but I'm all about it right now. And I was I was thinking about getting a ring with the corner pads, but at the same time, I was like, where am I going to put that? Like, I don't have a basement. I don't have an attic. Well, I do have a basement attic, but they're not like what most people think of over on the East Coast or in the Midwest. Over here, they're non-existent. It's just a little small, little cubbyhole type deal. So I'm trying to figure out where I would put that ring to set up said Super 7 figures in the Japanese-style ring. So my mind's already going about that one, I'll tell you. Just put it right on the kitchen counter. You don't need to cook dinner. Just put the figures right there. <laughs> Sam Manila, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> is that a, is that a new wrestler, Sam Manila? <laughs> well played, well played. I like the improv on that one. Where do wrestling figures rank at Figures Toy Company? I mean, you guys have so many licenses. You have. Do you guys still have Harry Potter? No, uh, Harry Potter was retired. Oh, it was. Uh, you know, we're still going strong with DC. Yep, we're still going strong with DC Comics. We're still going strong with Kiss. Uh, Hanna Barbera. I mean, Hanna Barbera includes a whole range of characters. You know, Scooby Doo. Blue Falcon. I mean, especially with the Scoob movie just coming out in recent months. I mean, Scooby-Doo has always been a huge seller, but that really picked up. And the fact that it used other Hanna-Barbera characters in it, like Blue Falcon and Dino Mutt. So you kind of get that new level of fan that's looking for Scooby products. And then, you know, by design, you're getting that Blue Falcon, that Dino Mutt. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's that crossover appeal there. The DC stuff, I mean, the Batman classic TV series is still going strong. We've been doing those figures for over five years now, mm -hmm. and that's still one of our best sellers. The classic TV series in the Super Friends line, and we just added a whole bunch of figures to the Super Friends line. We've got so many, so many different versions of characters coming out. We're working on Swamp Thing and Deathstroke and The Watchmen. I mean, if you're a comics fan or even like the most mainstream, like CW TV show, you know, Batman, Superman, Justice League kind of characters, you know, you're going to love these figures. They are the old school style. They are not made like a McFarlane or a Hasbro or a Mattel or anything like that. So you have to be familiar with the aesthetic. You have to know what you're going into. But, you know. People talk about retro figures, and like I said, most people, when you say retro figures on a wrestling podcast, they instantly think of Mattel. But these retro figures, um, which is what they are licensed as, are a throwback to the 70s and the 80s and like those original superhero figures, like the first superhero figures that ever came out.
do you collect any of those, like any of the old school comic book characters or any of the Hanna-Barbera characters? Do you personally collect any of those? Oh, yeah. Yeah. As far as our retro figures, I've got a whole set of the Three Stooges. I've got many of the Batman TV series. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Flash. So I have the Flash and the Reverse Flash on display. Um, Green Lantern, Green Arrow. We did figures for Stan Lee before he passed. So I have a Stan Lee figure. Uh, I've got quite a few of our retro releases. I'm I'm all in on everything we do. Uh, before it retired, we were doing Dallas. Uh, we did J.R. Ewing, classic character from the TV show Dallas. And yep. Dallas is actually one of my favorite TV shows of all time. So I have our J.R. Ewing figures, uh, both of them still sealed on display uh, in the original packaging. Uh, we did the Dukes of Hazard before that got retired. Uh, and that was a while ago before any of the controversy happened or uh, anything like that. Right. Uh, you know, just just so many things that we've had the license for, which, you know, either ran out or came due or, you know, the time frame came due. And then the other ones that just keep carrying on, you know, th- there's just a whole lot coming from Scooby-Doo and DC Comics in addition to the wrestling, which is why we separated the factories because of everything that we have planned for the future. Hold on. Did you say Dallas was your favorite show of all time? Dallas is one of my favorite shows of all oh, time. One I mean, of the, we all okay. know my favorite show of all time. Yeah, we all know what my favorite show of all time. Okay, I had to ask that. I was like, wait a second. If we were in a trivia round and they said, what is Chris's favorite television show? I would have <laughs> put all my money in on Saved by the Bell. No, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It is It is still Saved by the Bell. But no, Dallas is uh, one of my favorite shows of all time. Back in the day with, uh, with my family, see, uh, the house that I grew up in for quite a few years before we had uh, the house that I grew up in after the fact, uh, you know, for most of my school years, was, uh, you know, I'm old school Italian guy old school Italian family. And uh, over here on the East Coast, if you're Italian, well, you live in a big house where you kind of all live together, three floors, all different sections of the house. And uh, the house that I was born in, my aunt, my cousins, everyone would get together when Dallas was on and when Dynasty was on. And it was very (laughs) literally the old joke about you take the phone off the hook when that show's on, nobody needs to be bothered. That was exactly what it was like when those shows were on. So I was raised on primetime soap operas when I was three, four or five years old. And that's why I have an affinity for that format to this day. So just the fact that I was able to do that, I mean, that's the great thing about FTC and working at FTC. So my boss handles the vast majority of the retro licenses. He does the deals with Warner Brothers in, in DC and stuff like that. But he and I are actually relatively close in age. We're only about 10 years apart. So a lot of the stuff that we grew up liking and me more so because of my older cousins and their influence is the same stuff that he was growing up with. So I'm a KISS fan. We have the KISS license. I grew up watching Dallas. We have the Dallas license. I grew up watching the Dukes of Hazard. We have the Dukes of Hazard license. I, to this day, watch the Three Stooges with my five-year-old. We have a Three Stooges license. My son watches Scooby-Doo. We do Scooby-Doo. It just, it fits into so many aspects of my pop culture mind. And then I get to be the guy who's running the wrestling side of it. I mean, when I said before, years ago, when we first met and when we first talked on the podcast, that it was like walking into a dream job. Who gets to say that? Who gets to say they get to make a J.R. Ewing figure and they used to watch Dallas when they were a kid? You know, it's just it's insane. The the cool stuff that I've been able to say has happened through this job. You know, my main focus will remain the wrestling portion for this side, uh, you know, for, for this side of things, you know, whether that changes in the future. Who knows? Maybe I'll be running it all someday. Maybe I'll be like, you know, the complete, you know, vice president, underling, overseer guy, whatever title you want to give me. Um <laughs> You know, for now, it's just the wrestling, but the fringe benefits of working with everything else is just really, really cool. So when is FTC going to get the Save by the Bell license? If you think I haven't tried that through the years, <laughs> <laughs> you would be uh, you would be greatly mistaken. I mean, my efforts to do that go back to about 2004, 2005, when we were doing uh, old school figures under our classic TV toys banner. And that's when we did the uh, Happy Days Married with Children and I Love Lucy figures. I don't know if you're familiar with those at all, if we haven't really touched on those at all. But oh, yeah. yeah, way back before uh, way back before we were doing the DC stuff, I mean, this is when we were still doing the WWE replicas and when we were getting supplied by Jax and I had a warehouse full of Jax stuff and could pretty much grab any classic superstar I needed to off the shelf. Uh, we were doing stuff like that. So you know, we've always kind of dabbled in the side stuff away from wrestling. And, you know, for a while, We weren't doing any wrestling at all. There was kind of like that lull where the contract with WWE had expired and we didn't do the replica belts anymore. And, you know, that story that I told years ago where we got the Ring of Honor license and 
getting that so quickly and so easily led to me being able to pitch revitalizing the legends line and then going into the indie line, the rising stars line and doing the guys like uh, Doc Gallows and Tama Tonga and Sammy Callahan and all those guys that kind of brought that line to the forefront. One thing you guys always do well with the wrestling figures is you always seem to nail the face paint. And that's one thing I've always found impressive is like the Tama Tonga face painted figures still. I love that figure. I absolutely love that figure. Mm-hmm. Same thing with the Doc Gallows. The demon figure, truth be told, I actually had that already stored away in my uh, suitcase for Florida this past year because I was going to be hitting up the FTC booth to get that signed. Is there any other possibilities of more face-painted wrestlers coming down the line? There is, actually. Not only is it a face-painted wrestler, but it is a female face-painted wrestler. Wait, do we have uh, and breaking some people news? Probably- yeah, some people probably just screamed at their uh, iPod or their computer or however they are listening to this. Um, <laughs> but you know, one of the you know one one thing that is a benefit to doing it so uh, grassroots, like we said, and being so personable and so accessible online is you know I take a lot of requests into consideration. I take a lot of constructive criticism into consideration. Uh, tune out everything else, and then just kind of you know kind of make my path like, okay, well, where can we go with this? Like, you know, am I going to get clearance on signing someone? What's it going to be? And one of the most requested people to do, well, one of the most requested things to do was to get an impact wrestling license. And we do not have an impact wrestling license. Um, there has been no headway on that as of this date, as of this time, there are stars like all ego, Ethan page from the North who it will be coming out in the rising stars line, but there will also be a Rosemary figure coming out in the rising stars of wrestling series. So you will see another sculpt featuring face paint. And I know people are going to be elated over that because I saw her name uh, requested so many times. And this one has been in the works for a while and she has already entered production. I don't have any ETA on her, but that is a guarantee to be coming out as part of that series. Oh, that's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you for breaking the news about that one on the show. Not a problem. See, we need some good news in life right now, so I figured, why not make it some good fig life news? <laughs> she is a very, very popular wrestler among the industry, so that's a good gift for FTC. I'm happy for you guys. Absolutely, and you know, like we were talking about Tama Tonga and stuff, the gimmicks have that added layer of appeal. You know, uh, not only being a first time figure, but the characters. You know, the Blue Meanies, the Tama Tongas, the Kiss Demons. It's that you know. Even if you're not a wrestling fan per se, they might stand out to you. Just like the aesthetic, the design, the cloth goods, the clothing. I mean, that demon figure, you know, we discussed it before. That is the ultimate crossover figure because two of the strongest fan bases in pop culture are the Kiss Army and wrestling fans. Mm-hmm. So to just have the ability to combine those two licenses and do that figure just made, you know, amazing sense. But in regards to Rosemary, She is almost like a crossover figure in a way because there is such a strong groundswell of female wrestling fans and women's wrestling fans that want all of the female talent to be made or want to collect female talent. And then on top of that, you've got a female who's got a gimmick like Rosemary. So it's a win-win for everybody, whether you're just one of those, you know, I'm collecting everybody or I'm only collecting the women or I'm only collecting the gimmicks. Like it hits you across the board. It's funny you mentioned that. It's not only women. I've seen male collectors only collect the female wrestlers. Oh, absolutely. Even more so than like some of like the male wrestlers. Rosemary was kind of at the top of everyone's list. And I think that is also due in part to seeing how well the gimmick figures come out. You know, and there's a lot of great talent in Impact, so I can definitely see the reasoning why a lot of people would love us to be able to do some of those characters that are there. Um, I don't know the circumstances behind what's owned and who's under what contract or anything like that. But I know that I was able to get Ethan Page. I know I was able to get Rosemary. Whether that will continue with additional impact talent in the future, who knows? But you know, those two figures in particular, I'm really looking forward to. And the Rosemary figure, I mean, like I said, she was so requested, so wanted. And you know, I listen to the fans. I can't bring you everybody because I can't cut a deal that every wrestler you want is gonna want. But in this case, I was able to do it, and I hope that this news makes you very happy because I am doing my part in adding her to the Rising Stars line. If you think about it and you kind of write down all the names that you guys have coming out, that is a strong, strong offering from Figures Toy Company. 
Brian Pillman Jr., the ROH guys, PCO. It's just a strong, strong offering across the board, not just for Legends, not just for Rising Stars, also for Ring of Honor as well. Plus, on top of that, you have rings that you can throw these guys in and start wrestling with, or for the figure photography, can just start snapping photos. You know, and that's the other thing too, you know, the accessories, see a lot of people would look at the accessories or like the old grapple gear and just kind of like, you know, throw it in a tote or, you know, you'd use like your tables, ladders and chairs, but the, the designers out there, the, the fig photography people and the people that are into like their displays and stuff like that, they're so intricate and they're making art out of their hobby. It's awesome. So it's like, you know, all having all of the stuff that we have, whether it's a table, a ladder, a chair, or we have a contract signing playset, a barbed wire bat, you know, strands of barbed wire, um, Singapore canes, things like things of that nature. You can make an ECW layout, you know, for your fig photography. You could make uh, a barbed wire match. Now you can make a cage match. Like there's just so much appeal to the accessory end of things now. Whereas, you know, when we were younger, it was kind of like, oh, hey, you know, this ruthless aggression John Cena came with a sink. What am I going to do with this? You know, I just like kind of like <laughs> toss that aside. Um, right. You know, and the, you know, even when Jax was making like those early grapple gears, it was kind of like, you know, oh, hey, like, look, a crate. Well, how am I going to use a crate in my match? All I need is a, a chair for my fig fed or, or whatever. And now, you know, you've got people doing like these backstage scenes and, and recreating stuff that happened on Raws that they're watching on the network and doing like a side by side comparison to the still shot. It's just, it's insane. So I think that that really drives the accessory business too. And, and that's another thing, you know, once these figures are done and while these figures are in production, we also look at adding new accessories. And, you know, those are things that we take into consideration too. And we've gotten recommendations on numerous accessories through the years, or we've seen that there are accessories that might make sense with some of the talent that we're signing and we might go that route. So you know, we, we are always looking to add, you know, I can't say that we'll ever have everything that everybody wants. I mean, that seems like such a a major task to accomplish because everyone's opinions are always going to be different, but you know, I'll be damned if I'm not trying to add everything that I can possibly think of to give someone the ability to have the ultimate wrestling collection. Being figure toys, social media presence. What is one of the strangest requests for an accessory for a figure that you've ever got that you were kind of like, where did that just come from? Oh, let's see. And obviously we're not naming names. (laughs) No, no, no. I mean, we're not naming names. Um, you know, I'll have to think because, I mean, I'll be honest, some of them are so strange that I would just kind of like tune them out and, and, and skip over them because they would just like make no sense. Um, oh, it's kind of like an on-the-spot question. I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to actually, I'm gonna have to edit this because I, like, I can hear the Jeopardy thing going on in my head. It's, um, it's not often I can stump Christy Petrillo. No, it, no, it's not. I mean, but it, but it's a good point. I mean, you know, there have been times where someone's like, oh, hey, like, can you make like a, a, a coat rack or, you know, like something or like an ironing board for like a backstage scene? Like, uh, I think it was what was the match? Was it when uh, was it when like Victoria was one of Godfather's prostitutes and they used like the ironing board, like someone like hit someone with an ironing board or something like that? Just it was like one of like a, the most random <laughs> things. I'm like. All right, I'm not really thinking of like an ironing board. Like, you know, when I like, I'll think of a trash can, a two by four, a shopping cart for the new Jack figure, stuff like that. But yeah, like a, an ironing board, like, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if I can get that one off the ground. Like, there might be like five people that buy it, you know, and a couple of people for like backstage scenes. But I mean, even the people that are doing the backstage scenes, how many of them are doing like the makeup ladies area or oh. like the. <laughs> Or like the seamstresses area. Like I, I don't see too many shots of those. I mean, I see plenty of like, you know, fights near the garage door, but I don't see like any uh, seamstress pearls. After New Jack's episode aired for Dark Side of the Ring, did you see an uptick in New Jack figures being sold from Figures Toy Company? 110%. I had a feeling. Yeah. I was curious, you know, because it was a very interesting episode. So when that popped up, I was like, Ooh, I wonder how Figures Toy Company is going to do with their New Jack figure. Is that going to sell or are they going to see the uptick? But I'm glad to hear you guys did. New Jack has always sold very well. And after the Dark Side of the Ring aired, there was definitely an uptick. And there was enough of an uptick that I reached out to him 
because that was one of the first Legends figures that we made. So remember, you know, FTC makes limited runs within a window of a talent's contract. And after that drops off, that's it. You know, and like I said, someone with uh, an ongoing relationship like Jim Cornette, the potential for variants are there. It was such a strong uptick that I reached out to New Jack and am trying to kind of build that relationship up again where we can keep an ongoing relationship going with him so that if and when that figure completely sells out, we can either replenish or revisit him and try to get another one out there. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a guarantee. Right. I've made the communication. And an awesome, awesome guy to talk to, like like very cool, very laid back, you know, very willing to, to listen and is kind of all for it. Uh, nothing concrete has been said or done, but it's definitely something that that episode has proven was worth looking at because people were going nuts for that figure. And, uh, you know, even not only after the episode, but you could see that figure hanging on his wall. So a lot, I think a lot of people took note of it, too, and were like, what is that figure? What figures toy? Oh, oh crap. There's a new Jack figure. So if you aren't even really a collector or just kind of like an ECW fan for back in the day or something, that was your first exposure to the figure. And that was huge for us because that's just added promotion for not only the new Jack figure, but everything else that we've got that you'll see when you look it up. Yep. So what are you collecting? Right now, I mean, are you just strictly wrestling figures? You did mention some of the other lines from Figure Toys Company, but outside of wrestling figures, are you looking at any of the Hasbro GI Joes like Scott is? Are you looking at any of the Power Ranger figures? What else are you collecting outside of wrestling? Some of the GI Joe figures have tempted me because when I was younger, I was completely immersed in GI Joe. Um, from like 1983 to 93, I was all in you know i i had so much gi joe stuff but i feel like i have to really pick and choose if i'm going to get in on the new ones because i could easily find myself having that appeal draw me back in um and i have a five-year-old who is also collecting stuff so obviously that's coming out of daddy's wallet <laughs> uh, unless grandma and papa give him some extra money on the weekend it's all coming out of daddy's pocket um uh, so i mean right now you know with the wrestling figures uh like you said, like we said before, I help him collect Mattel. I'm planning on helping him collect AEW. Um, as far as non-wrestling stuff, I am very much looking forward to the Masters of the Universe Origins figures, um, which are going to be coming out relatively soon. I know some of them started hitting in certain areas because Masters of the Universe was the very first toy line I collected as a child. And I had so much of the original stuff. I still have quite a bit of the original stuff uh, in varying levels of condition. But my son latched onto He-Man a couple of years ago. He was about three, and he still likes it. He's still into it. Uh, I had bought him some of those uh, reissue figures and some of the similar figures that were put out by Funko, like the DC Comics um, Primal Age, uh, whatever they were called, like the Batman and the Mr. Freeze that yep. were all like done He-Man style. Yep. Um, so he's still he's still very into it. Like he plays with you know my old He-Man figures a lot. So that again, that's something that I kind of want to start from the beginning with him, just because the old uh, Mattel classics were just so expensive, and you know getting some of them was just like so hard to do. And the secondary market is just again, it's something that we're never going to finish a collection of. Right. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, he's also recently gotten into Ghostbusters, so I've grabbed him some of the Ghostbusters figures that just popped up at Walmart. Uh -huh. And then, uh, you know, I get the occasional Funko Pop and the occasional Marvel figure. Um, just recently picked up the Cobra Kai Funko Pops and uh, the two Bad Boys Funko Pops. Uh, usually, you know, I try not to go too heavy with them because Funko covers everything mm -hmm. and I'm into pretty much everything. So uh, it's kind of hard to resist. You know, I, I might be the only person listening to fully posable that really wants all of the Duran Duran Funko pops right now. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's just really hard sometimes. <laughs> well, we are kiss fans. I will say that one of my, my actual first concert was kiss. We mentioned that on the show. It was the revenge tour. So it was, it was very interesting. Such a good album. It was, it was pretty good. I, I didn't hate that album. It's, I wish I would have seen him with the paint on earlier on, but obviously I was way too young, but that's a whole different story for, that's for our music podcast. <laughs> we, now the revenge tour was the tour that they filmed for, uh, was it kiss extreme Close Up when they did the alive three tour? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I, I still have, I still have that on VHS and on DVD. Uh, so maybe you can help remind us. So the opening band was great white was firehouse 
Trixie. They, well, they weren't on the video, so I'm not sure. Oh, who, uh, okay. okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who opened up. I, I mean, I, yeah, I believe Great White was on that tour, and uh, it, it's sad how much Great White information I know because uh, <laughs> that whole that whole in, no that whole incident happened here in Rhode Island. That whole club incident. Oh, that yes. was that that happened about ten minutes from where my house is. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and we're, we're not going to make this a sad podcast. We all know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, we'll we'll we'll, we'll kind of skip past that one. But uh, yeah, I, I've. I have unearthed my fair share of great white information <laughs> over the years. So that was the only reason why I was able to recall that. Yeah, man, the memory on you, man, you remember so much WCW stuff and the most random stuff. Like if I wouldn't have gone through that WCW wormhole back in March, April, May, I wouldn't even know half of the stuff that you're talking about because I would be sitting here for like 10 minutes trying to remember it. But it's funny, like you and I were talking before we started recording and you, I mentioned the Cole twins. And you're like, oh, yeah, I just downloaded something of the Cole Twins. Oh, when they were facing the Hollywood Blondes. And I'm like, of course you did. You're Chris. You love that era of WCW. Well, not only that, but you were talking about like the shirt that Bam Bam Bigelow had on. And I'm like, oh, it was this one. And you're like, yeah. Yes, the cutoff sleeve flame one. I'm glad we haven't gotten a figure of that Bam Bam Bigelow, to say the least. You know, I I would honestly love Bam Bam Bigelow was always one of my favorites as a kid. Um, I was very fortunate to meet him um, backstage at Nitro. Uh, I've talked about going backstage for Nitro about six months into FTC. And Bam Bam Bigelow was one of the first guys that we met that night. And he actually took my boss's son. Now, the same boss's son who oversees the wrestling figures with me now was 10 years old on this night. And Bam Bam brought him around to everybody and let everybody sign the program for him. Like Just like a very super down to earth gentle giant of a guy and that made me like an even bigger fan of him to see him like just treat us so well and like be so down to earth and i would have loved to have been able to do a bam bam i know his rights remain with wwe yeah and i feel like you know both times they've done him in mattel it's been like in these limited runs you know secondary market shoots right up uh i love the jacks classic figure that's one of my favorite classic figures from jacks i think they did a great job on him and uh, i wish they would do a new one uh, whether it's in like the WCW with like the gray flame or the blue flame, um, just something new to get him back out on the market on like a mainstream level, because I just think he's one of the best characters from the eighties and nineties. And just, he's not well represented in, in figure form. I mean, they're great figures, so I don't mean it in that sense, but I would love to see him get some type of like mainstream elite release where he's, you know, two per case, or even if you throw him in like a, a flashback battle pack with like, the million dollar man or, or diesel or Tatanka or something like that. Just like something to kind of get him back out there for the people who are collecting again. Well, they did just start up the legend series line. So there is a, that possibility, but uh, Hey, let's not look over his LJN. I loved his LJN. LJ, LJN was a good figure. I mean, you know, what can you say? It wasn't the LJN recruit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Um, no, I, uh, I had his LJN. Um, it, looks like he fell into a tar pit because his face is like all you know fall you know pieces falling off and stuff like that you know he he did not survive the 80s very well my lj and bam bam bigelow um <laughs> but you know just uh he he's someone that you know i have uh, an extra jack's classic from back in the day uh that i ha- i have it set aside for my son because my son is a fan of his and in, in watching the old footage but i just haven't given it to him yet like you know maybe i'll give it to him you know, when he starts school in the fall, you know, I'm kind of like, we talked about that off air that I kind of stockpile certain figures for him and kind of like set them aside so that when he does something good or, you know, take him out, treat him for a day or something that he can pick a figure out and stuff like that. And Bam Bam's one of them because he like thinks Bam Bam's cool. Like he just thinks it's cool that like this big guy can move around like that and that he can watch him in WWE or he can watch them in ECW. Like, you know, my son likes a whole variety of stuff. So he's seen them across the board and i think that kind of built his familiarity with him so i would just like to see him in something current because i just think he's one of wrestling's best characters that just doesn't get a lot of love figure wise so i have to ask so you do stockpile figures away for zach and when he does something Mm -hmm. good you give him a figure and stuff like that but do you ever lose any of the figures that you have stockpiled for him i don't lose them personally um you know uh, (laughs) friends of mine these figures for him. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, you know, he collects so much. So, you know, when the newer figures hit, I will grab them, especially like right now with, with COVID going on and distribution, you know, just kind of 
failing in, in so many areas. And over here, uh, I've mentioned this in the past, but where I live, there are two targets, each within five minutes of my house. There's a Walmart, um, there's discount stores like Burlington, Five Below. Like, you know, I have found everything from retros to basics to elites at, at all of these figures. But it just kind of stinks because there are times where I'll be like, okay, you know, we can go to the store and you can choose something out. It was something that my parents and my grandparents always did for me. And the reason I started kind of, uh, you know, saying uh, stockpiling is because. I would take him to the store and then it, he's met with nothing but AJ Styles topics right. and Finn Balor's yeah. and, and all that stuff. So, you know, if I see something pop up on Amazon or on walmart.com, I'll order it, but then I'll wait until, you know, Hey, it's the end of the week. And, you know, you had a great week at school this week or, Hey, like, you know, you're going to stay at grandma's house tonight. Um, you know, here, take something new with you. Like, you know, blah, 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 like all that stuff. And especially now with the virus, you know, he doesn't get to go to, the store to pick everything out. You know, I've taken them out and everything, but definitely not as often because, you know, we just try to cut back on, on going out as often as we used to anyway. Right. Um, so like, you know, I've got the, the street profits set aside for him because I was able to score those off the Amazon for him. Um, and I will let him, you know, kind of choose or, or I'll kind of pick and choose. But when it comes to uh, losing the figures, I have luckily not misplaced anything. Uh, but, Around Christmas time, uh, a friend of mine was able to find some of the uh, more coveted retros uh, at this stage of the game at Five Below, and <laughs> he mysteriously lost them and was unable to find them. And not all that long ago, finally found them, and it turned out that the bag he had put them in was like a, a holiday bag, a Christmas bag, and the bag got folded up and mixed in with other like gift wrap and stuff t you know tucked away <laughs> and he had been looking forever and just recently when he was cleaning out that area of his house he's like i found your figures and i'm like where were they he's like they were in a bag from christmas i'm like with like how did you have a bag from christmas laying around he's like i didn't they were with all the christmas stuff <laughs> There are a couple of figures that he's been, that there are a couple of figures that I've been waiting to uh, to add to the collection that will finally be added that uh, are about uh, six months past the date of delivery at this point. <laughs> I find that funny because our mom used to lose Christmas gifts, still does to this day. There would be times where Scott and I would go snooping, and I don't know if you ever heard this on the show, but Scott and I would go snooping. And I remember finding this, there was an Oakland Athletics player out here. His name was Walt Weiss, Rookie of the Year back in 89, 88. Anyways. I'm familiar. That is my second favorite baseball team. Oh, seriously? Okay, cool. So, I, I'm, a, I'm, a Yankees, I'm a Yankees fan, then an A's fan. <laughs> well, you got to fly out here for a game one day. I, I would love to fly out there in general. I've never been to the old CA. Yeah, you got a place to stay, you know. But mom had purchased a Walt, autographed Walt Weiss baseball with a Donruss card that was kind of like a little baseball plaque mixture type deal. Mm -hmm. So the previous year for Christmas, Scott and I go snooping. I find the baseball and I find the card. Scott was the A's fan. I was like, okay, well, Scott's going to be getting this for Christmas. So Christmas rolls around. I happened to notice Scott didn't get the Walt Weiss autographed baseball. And I'm like, oh, that's weird, but I can't say anything because that will reveal that we knew. That You'll kind of blow your spot, right? Yep. So the following year, Scott and I are going snooping again. And guess what's right there? The autographed baseball and card. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> when are we getting this? Sure enough, Christmas rolls around. Scott didn't get the autographed baseball. I slipped up a couple weeks later and said something about the baseball. My mom goes, oh, how'd you know about that? I'm like, ah, crap. <laughs> you know? I was like, ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> Caught. No, what you've got to do is you've got to buy her that same exact thing for this Christmas. <laughs> I don't even know if my mom remembers Walt Weiss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, you got to come out here. California, you got a place to stay. We'll take you to an A's game when things open up, of course. I always have to put the air quotes around that. This sounds terrible, and I'm just I'm ready for everything to open up right now. I mean, it's <laughs> it's just hard. It's just hard, but like, because I'm an extrovert, you know. I I know this works for some people because they like to kind of relax and be inside. And you know, believe me, I you know I've got my movie collection to keep me busy. I've got you know all my wrestling stuff and my collecting to do and all my FTC work. But um, when you are homebound with a five year old who is the light of your life, but has more energy than you can muster up every day, <laughs> you definitely you definitely want to find an escape and uh you know god bless him he's he's 
on fire every day from 7 a.m. until 8 o'clock at night, just going, going, going. And, uh, you know, as you get older, uh, as a child, nap time vanishes and we are kind of at that stage. <laughs> so, it's just, all right, daddy's trying to work. Daddy's trying to work. But, you know. Somebody asked me the other day, they said, what do you miss the most, you know, about everything being open? And I said, there's two things I miss the most. Actually going to a restaurant or a diner and sitting down and having dinner. And number two, autograph signings. This past WrestleCon, I missed it so much. Not running around getting autographs from the wrestlers. Not going to get my Kiss Demon figure signed. Not seeing you because... When you go to get autographs, you know that you're going to see a bunch of people that you know. And mm -hmm. for me, that was one thing that I really missed and kind of hit me just recently. I was like, man, I really miss autograph signings. The more Scott and I talk about it on the show, like, what are we going to do when things open up? Are we going to be able to hand over our pens? That doesn't sound feasible right now, but are we going to be able to do something like that? Or what's going to be the proper protocol? And it's one of those things that I'm thinking about more and then it just hits me damn, I really miss signings and I really miss being around everybody at WrestleCon and seeing you and going to lunch with you or dinner with you and see, doing the community Fig Life meetup and having you show up. And I really just miss that camaraderie of WrestleCon just in general. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, this past. So this year was going to be in Tampa. Now, Tampa is where the FTC office is. It's where my boss lives. The whole plan for Tampa was not only that I'd be going down for wrestling for work, my son's birthday is in March. He turned five. WrestleMania was his birthday present this year, or it was to be his birthday present. So we were going to post up in my boss's house. I was going to work WrestleCon. My kid was going to get to go to WrestleMania and some other events. I was going to get to see you guys and see my crew from the Wrestling Observer that I travel down there with every year. And I mean, you know, even my friends that are my very best friends that I talk to every day in a group text because we're kind of spread out across the country. I mean, one of my best friends lives, you know, an hour and a half away in Connecticut. My other friend is in DC. My other friend is over in California. So we're not too far spread except for one of us, but we always get together at least once, if not maybe twice a year. And we have not seen each other in ages because one family responsibility, because uh, there are new babies in all of their families, mm -hmm. but then this virus hit. And that really kind of sucked the wind out of everything, too, because obviously no one's traveling. No one's going to put themselves at risk. No one's going to put their families at risk. So it's like just across the board, it's like the work aspect and the, you know, seeing people that I'm close to, like, you know, the people from FTC that have been, you know, not only, you know, the people that I work for and with, but like a second family to me for the last 20 years of my life. And not letting my son be able to go to the WrestleMania that he was looking for and having to explain to him what this virus is and, and what's going on. And, you know, he gets it, but it's also kind of hard for a five-year-old to comprehend the true nature of it and the true effect of it. It was just, just so like depressing that that's where we were at. And it's like, you know, throw your mask on, you know, things are opening up uh, a little bit, you know, go, go out, be safe, but, you know, try to keep it scaled back. Right. But at the same time, I completely get why it's easier said than done because I like to be out. I like to be, mingling i like to go out to dinner i like to be in a crowd i like to do all these types of things so you know i definitely try to capitalize now that things are starting to open up uh I took my son to the theater the other day the theater is only showing classic movies at this time so my son got to see ghostbusters on the big screen he had seen a little bit of it on tv mm -hmm. but took him to the theater there were six people in the theater that we were in and i probably saw maybe 20 in total throughout the lobby between coming and going. So, you know, people are still, you know, being reserved and, and rightfully so, you know, people are scared or people are just doing their part. You know, if you're going to go out, be safe about it and let's, let's get through this thing so that we can get back to conventions and signings and less restrictions and less worrying and, you know, more positivity out there in the world because it's, it's really doing a number on everyone. Yeah. Well, Chris, as always, we appreciate you coming on and thank you for doing the breaking news of Rosemary. That is awesome, man. We're happy for you guys. Thank you. Not a problem. See, like I said, got to get some, uh, got to get some good news out there. So that's yes. good signal news for everyone. Thank you, man. Thank you. And we really appreciate you coming on as always, man. You've been in our corner since you reached out to us four and a half years ago. And we thank you, man. You know, we back. Has it been that long? Don't, don't make me feel old. Come on. Man. For over four and a half years. <laughs> four and a half 
Yeah, I, I, but it, it's it's so funny like to say that because I mean I look at the FTC website every day as, as I'm doing my work and I'm like, okay, like you know, got this, got this. And I'm like, huh? Wait a minute. We put that one out like two years ago. Has it been two years since that one? It's just time is like, whew. It, it might feel slow right now, but overall, yeah, I, I can't believe how far it's been going. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, it was it was before Dallas, and Dallas was four years ago. Yep, that was the funny thing is like you and I were texting because I was trying to find you in WrestleCon, and that was a little compact in Dallas. Yes. And I'm thinking, oh, I can find this guy. He's over by Headlock Comics. And I'm looking and I'm looking. And I walk right past you. I walk right past you again. <laughs> walk right past you one more time. And then all of a sudden, I, you kind of go, Jeff, like the side eye, hey, is that you? <laughs> I'm like, yes. And the, you know, that that was awesome just being able to talk to you right there. And then the following year in Orlando, go to dinner after Access. That was awesome. Like Celeste and I got done with Access and we were just like, Let's call Chris. Let's go see. Let's see if he wants to go to dinner because apparently the uh, WrestleCon hotel we didn't know at the time was close by access. So let's go have dinner with Chris. And sure enough, we go have dinner with you at like 10 o'clock at night. (laughs) You know, it's just kind of fun. You know, the the friendships and the camaraderies that we have developed from this wrestling figure community. I mean, it would never have happened without the Internet. But at the same time, it is happening and it is awesome. You know, just everybody coming together and enjoying these figures. And I mean, and look at everybody. I mean, you know, I, and I, I, I'm not going to toot my own horn. Cause like, I appreciate all the kind stuff that, that you say about me. And, you know, we all, you know, me and Figure Story Company are definitely in your corner because you've always treated us with respect. But, you know, you've got other people to like, you know, you've got uh, Brian Breaker. You know, you've, you've got someone who competed in the New Japan ring. You've got, you know, James Frank, who has produced documentaries and podcasts and all this. Like, you have all these people, not just from the collector's community, but from throughout various corners of the wrestling world yep. that have latched onto it and helped it grow, whether it's, you know, coming to a meetup or cross promotion on their podcast or a contest or a giveaway, uh, you know, stuff like that. I mean, you know, you guys have, you know, put in the good word for our figures and you guys have been very constructive about it and talked about, Hey, you know what? This sculpt seems a little off. I might not go for that one, but Oh, but that one, Oh, okay. Well, I, yeah. Like I'm definitely like, that's a day one for me. Right. And then, you know, you've got someone like James Frank, who's been like, Hey, you know, I, I've talked to this guy. I've got his contact information. I, I told him what you do. I've mentioned a figure on, you know, Xbox show for you. Like, you know, everyone kind of goes to bat for each other. Like, you know, there is loyalty amongst everybody, even guys like, you know, uh, guy, you know, guys like Steve Hoker or, or Chad or, you know, any of those guys who are like, Hey, you know what? Like, you know, I know you collect and you're missing this guy or your son likes this guy, or I need this guy. Have you found him? And everybody just kind of helping everybody out. Like nobody's looking for clout. Nobody's looking to get one up on anyone. No one's looking for profit. It's just, it's very down to earth. It's, it's very cool. And, you know, you could even see that at the meetups, uh, in New Orleans in last year. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, people trading quote unquote rare figures just because, Hey, you need that one. I don't need it as much as you want it. You know, take that one. Like, you know, it's just, you know, nobody, nobody cares about the superfluous stuff. It's like very chill, very, uh, very California, I guess you could say just like, <laughs> kind of like that, that mellow beach life atmosphere. And, uh, you know, that is partially why my nickname is Malibu. So I am <laughs> So it it is a credit to what you guys have started and, you know, you're, you're not alone. There, there's many others who follow that same vibe and, you know, now more than ever, that's, that's the vibe to follow. There's, there's too much going on. And even when it's over, just, just be chill. Yeah. And you know what the other thing is, is that it really meant a lot to Scott and I back in 2016 that you were the first designer or someone from a big toy company to reach out to us. Like it meant a lot that you slid into the DMS and you're like, Hey, you know, I'd love to be on your show. I love what you guys are doing. You know, let's talk. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I think we had just talked about the ring of honor series and you were like, let's talk. And I'm like, Oh, whoa. Like, a big toy company guy wants to talk to us like Scott and I are just like, (gasps) you know, like kids on Christmas, you know, waiting for a Walt Weiss baseball. But (laughs) it was, it it was one of those things. It was just, it meant so much to us. And, you know, to this day, we thank you for ever reaching out to us because that really meant a lot to us. So we thank you, man. No, I mean, that's, you know, I'm just doing my part. I mean, 
you know, that's one thing too. It, like it, I'm very gracious to be able to get the, the promotion out there or the hype out there, or even just talk about it because when you, you know, we have all these outlets now, we have Twitters and Facebook and, and stuff like that. And sometimes it's almost kind of like, you know, you're beating people over the head with information. It's like, oh, like this is the timeline and this is why. And it's like, you know, you feel like kind of like a broken record, but then, you know, it becomes less about the product and less about the promotion and more about the discussion as a whole. You get to see the real people behind the scenes. You get to see the people behind who's hosting the podcast, the people behind who's a guest. You know, you have people like Kevin Kleinrock who, you know, you sit down and talk to him and he's done so much in wrestling, but you find out like, you know, how down to earth he is and, you know, his likes and dislikes. And you talk to Brian Breaker and just kind of like throw jabs at each other and jokes at each other and stuff like that. It's just everybody has forged a bond over one collective thing, that being collecting and you know, you guys are equally responsible and you guys are equally appreciated for allowing me the avenue to come on and say, hey, FTC's got this coming on, or even just to retweet it. I mean, you know, I pump out information daily that, you know, can get so far with a retweet or a like or whatever, but you guys are always on the ball. And it might be the 65th time we've talked about the Alex Wright figure, but you guys are like, this figure is awesome. Take a look at this rendering. Here it is. Retweet, retweet, yep. retweet. Yeah. So, you know, it, there, I have no doubt in my mind that these wrestling lines are going as far as they are to be able to say that these figures are retiring or, you know, like we were talking off air about, you know, some of the sales numbers and how well certain ones are doing and, you know, how quickly some of them have sold out like that Jim Cornette, like that is thanks in part to spreading all that information and giving me the chance to spread it and talking about FTC or talking about, boss fight or talking about mass republic or any of these different brands that are coming out you know mattel is great and uh you know i don't ever want anyone to think that i knock mattel i know that people in the past have been like oh well you know ftc just doesn't like mattel da, 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 which is not true at all uh like i said if you looked at my son's toy chest you would see that i might as well just buy stock in mattel at this point um <laughs> but you know M mattel mattel is the big boy and mattel has you know their people that are are doing their part are doing what they do to promote them. But, uh, you know, I, I don't mean to, uh, for this to uh, sound the wrong way, but Mattel doesn't need any help. They're Mattel. Uh, <laughs> the, well, yeah. uh, the boss, yeah, the, uh, but you know, the, the boss fight studios and the figures toy companies and, and the people like that, that are, are doing this from the ground up and, you know, keeping a level head and just towing the line and trying to grow into something big you know, we're all, we're all in this together. You did it for the podcasting and we're doing it for the making and we're all doing it for the collecting. It is one community. And actually, you know, it's funny you mentioned Kevin. Kevin actually lives about 15 minutes away from me. So if you ever come out for that A's game, then uh, we'll try to get Kevin out so you guys can do the uh, mega powers handshake. Oh yeah. We're going to have to uh, kick back and watch a couple of Say by the Bell reruns together. <laughs> Chris, as always, it is a pleasure to have you on, and I promise we're going to have you on sooner than later. So when more figures start to pump out from FTC, we're going to get you back on. We're going to have you push them to the moon. Yeah, please let me on so I can uh, tease Scott about his newfound G.I. Joe obsession. Oh, don't. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, man. I swear, that G.I. Joe collection. Anyways, but I want to thank you again, Chris, for being on. Thank you very much. I'll be talking to you. Uh, yeah. Holy Hoseable. Let's go. Jeff and Scott, the Tomb Brothers, busting out the ring. But we don't take it out the box, M.O.C. Happy toy hunting, we'll see you next week. With the OGs of WFP. Fully posable, thank you all for listening. It ain't no storyline, real life siblings. So everybody go and do your toy spotting. Hashtag Fig Life, adios from the Kings.